Hello! Today we are taking a look at simple uranium chemistry in water. For this a spatula tip of uranyl acetate was dissolved in distilled water. The uranyl acetate is somewhat old as you can see from the container and we simply have more of it than uranyl nitrate. Test tube 1 contains only distilled water and now something has happened that I still can't explain after weeks. When 4 molar HCl is added a decolorization occurs. Adding 6 molar sodium hydroxide causes the formation of a dark yellow flaky solid. Adding concentrated ammonia solution results in a similar yellow flaky precipitate. When 12% hydrogen peroxide is added a much lighter and finer precipitate forms. Compared to the peroxide a darker but still light yellow solid forms upon adding sodium phosphate. Adding sodium nitrite causes no noticeable change. So what just happened? First let's talk about hexavalent uranium. It has the radon configuration and a hypothetical uranium 6 plus ion and aqueous solution has too high of a charge density to exist as such in water. It exists as the uranyl ion. The bond order between oxygen and uranium is 3 with a distance of 180 picometers. You can see the sigma bond in this photo where the 5fz cube orbital overlaps with the p orbital of oxygen and the 6dz square orbital also overlaps. Now we just have one bond explained but for the bond order of 3 we need two additional pi bonds and in this picture only one of these two pi bonds is depicted. We can see the overlapping of the 5f xz squared orbital and for the other pi bond you would then have the 5fyz squared orbital overlapping but this is not shown here. And in addition to that we have the 6dxz or the 6d yz orbital overlapping with the p orbitals of the oxygen. Of course the literature is linked down below. I found it just fun to delve deeper but these are details that not even a normal chemistry student would even care about unless it's theoretical chemistry. So yes we have the uranyl ion and the bonding between the oxygen and the uranium explained and in this uranyl ion we have the uranium in the oxidation state plus six which exists as water as the UO2 2 plus ion. So coming back to our observations at the beginning of the video. What happened when I added the hydrochloric acid? I have no idea. I have been experimenting for over a week now and I still don't know much more. Was it this particular uranyl acetate? No, <laughs> I used different uranyl acetate from a different container and it behaved the same way. Was it the hydrochloric acid? N no, I used 4 molar, 6 molar and concentrated hydrochloric acid and they all showed the same decolorizing effect. Was it the acetate ion? Yes, it did not happen with the uranyl nitrate. Measured a UV vis and there was no change in color. It remained yellow but disproportionately paler than it could be explained by a just normal dilution effect. I wanted to crystallize it so I thought that would make sense but when adding concentrated HCl on uranyl acetate there was no decolorizing effect. It turned yellow again which is normal for the uranyl ion. Only when you start with uranyl acetate, then add water and then add the HCl. Only then will this decolorizing effect come into play. I have no idea why. And it remains colorless even after several days of waiting, maybe some oxidation from air or something, and even after heating, it remains colorless. Does anyone know more than I do? It's a very strange effect. Back to the other compounds. Adding sodium hydroxide precipitates sodium diurinate. The purple balls are the sodium ions and the blue ones are uranium. The mercury file for this is only moderately nice to be honest. What's so special about the sodium diurinate? It's part of yellow cake. Yellow cake is not a pure compound. In practice it's a mixture of various uranium compounds including sodium diurinate and uranium trioxide after baking and also some ammonium diurinate. So ammonium diurinate forms when adding ammonia solution. It's often abbreviated as ADU standing for ammonium diurinate. The molecular formula quite well describes that you have uranium oxygen chains. This makes it an oxometallate but in ammonium and sodium diurinate there is no diurinate ion. It's a mixture of uranium trioxide, water and ammonium and other polyurinates. That's why you sometimes see this general formula to distance itself from an actual diurinate ion which 
isn't contained in the sodium or ammonium they urinate. And next we have the urinal peroxide. Structurally, it's quite interesting since the peroxide ion, I think, is very cool. And in this case, it's edge on so sideways, and it gets a mu designation as it bridges two uranium ions. Uranyl peroxide is also used in the extraction of uranium from ore. These water-insoluble compounds always make for a good separation step. Even though it's a peroxide, it's not explosive or anything like that. I have no idea why, but seeing this empirical formula UO4, it's just way too much oxygen to be attached. Better stick with the UO2O2, which describes the reality much better. What about the phosphate? I used it just because many beautiful uranium minerals belong to the uranyl phosphate, such as autonite, torbenite, and uranocyside, and even uranofan. It only makes sense that these compounds are not water soluble, otherwise, all these beautiful minerals in nature would be gone after the first rain. And the nitrate, because why not, it's just the most harmless and strongest monodentate ligand and with some metals it resulted in nice color. Apparently not here. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.